So the plot thickens somewhat. That was uh, Congressman Devin Nunez. He is chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, basically saying that members of Donald Trump's transition team, possibly including President-elect Trump at that time himself, were under U.S. Uh, government surveillance following the November presidential election. Now, he says it was likely legal. It was incidental collection, as he puts it, but it certainly raises all sorts of questions. He said it was not related to the FBI's investigation into Russia's potential meddling in the election. Let's bring in Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, who joins us now with more. Um, we'll get to the London terror attack today in just a moment, but this is interesting stuff, Ralph. Uh, what was your, what's your first initial reaction? My first initial reaction was that Congressman Nunez has no sense of irony. <laughs> he has spent weeks attacking others for leaking information. And he today, for what I believe is political expedience, leaked highly sensitive information about uh, electronic surveillance of a sort that is, as he said, legal, mm -hmm. but that's generally not made available to the public. He may have compromised a, a very important investigation or investigations. I mean, to me, this guy, you know, he loves the spotlight, and he was trying in a, in a very partisan way to divert attention from the emptiness, uh, the vacuity of the president's tweets, and from the real issues with Russia, as we saw came up again today with more res rev uh, revelations about Paul Manafort's past. Right. So the problem here is partisanship on both sides when the American people deserve honesty and answers. And if Congressman Nunes does not like leaks, I suggest he stop leaking. So what role would President Obama potentially play in this? Because as we know, President uh, Trump has, has made claims that have not been proven true. But it does, you know, P President Obama was president during this period of time. Would he have not had to have okayed the intelligence? No, absolutely not. Um, though if the FISA court approves it, that's it. Okay. He may, may or not have been briefed on it. If it's a criminal investigation, he probably wasn't. But we don't know. But, but what's clear is contrary to what you may have heard, Ashley, mm -hmm. I think you, you, you understand this, the President of the United States cannot arbitrarily order a wiretap or any other type of surveillance on a U.S. citizen or a legal resident of the United States. It doesn't work like that. We are a rule of law country, despite the mad, madcap howling we're hearing from both sides of the aisle. But he did talk about what he said was the inappropriate unmasking of names, and it was spread, this information was spread throughout the intelligence community, which he says is just not right. Well, he's not the judge of that. The courts would be the judge of that, and the intelligence professionals. Uh, having spent my career in military intelligence, mm. I can tell you we have extremely strict rules uh, forbidding us to use, in, in, in DOD, you just, if you accidentally, in a, in a foreign operation, accidentally include the name of an American citizen, the, wh the, the whistle drill you have to go through to correct that and make amends is just really intense. The American people are protected. And I think, you know, Congressman Nunez was, he, he was we used to say he, in, in uh, the military, he's selling wolf tickets. I mean, he was, he was throwing out all these innuendos about, oh, names are unmasked. Can't tell you who they are. Right. They're spread around, but I can't tell you how far. Look, yeah. he was doing a shabby leak. There's no way around that. Sorry, look, I'm not being partisan on this. I want to get to the bottom of the Russia issue. I sure. want our president to succeed. I want our country to do well. But this is politicking, pure. Listen, uh, the president apparently was just asked about this. We're going to have a tape of his response very shortly. But I want to switch gears here, uh, Colonel, if we can, and talk about the events that, we, that unfolded uh, this afternoon in London. Dreadful. Four people dead, including a police officer. The suspect himself killed, um, not before he mowed down uh, innocent people on Westminster Bridge. Um, we know this can happen at any time. Um, but what was your response to this? Do you think anything in particular triggered this? Um, well, we don't know, and we still need to get more details about, you know, it looks like it follows the pattern of Islamist terror attacks mm -hmm. using trucks or vehicles. He saw it in Nice, in Berlin, and elsewhere. Uh, but we still need to know, was he native-born, was he an immigrant, was he claimed refugee status, was he some, you know, white punk uh, who converted in, in, to Islam in jail, or, you know, was it just a crazy guy? So let's wait for information on that. But what we do know is this, 
that we live in free societies. We want to continue to enjoy our freedoms. So although our intelligence and security and law enforcement services do an, an excellent job, let's not mm. lose sight of that, of, of stymieing complex plots and stopping them, you can't stop everything. And while we have spent north of a trillion dollars on security uh, here in the United States, both our government and private, the private sector since 9-11, the terrorists are ingenious at finding very cheap ways yes. to exploit our societies against us. So it's important, you know, we want to fix this. We don't want this to happen again. Well, it's going to happen again because in a free society, we can't just stop all the traffic around Westminster Bridge to, down to Trafalgar Square. We can't close down Midtown Manhattan. So they're you know, turning our know, free Ralph, society against us. What struck me us. about this was, to your point, all it was was a car and a yeah. knife, maybe a couple of knives, to bring central London, Parliament, and 10 Downing Street was on lockdown, all with just a car and a knife. Yeah, and of course, it was a very symbolic target to hit Westminster Bridge right mm. by the Houses of Parliament. So all the shots, you know, you've got Parliament in the background. Mm. And, and they choose symbols. And certainly, when we take down ISIS and destroy the caliphate, and we will destroy the caliphate in the coming months, it won't stop all acts of terror. Because the important thing that, you know, look, Islam today is a troubled religion, has deep structural problems. The Islamists within that religion, the violent terrorists, uh, are, are doing damage to the entire world, including the Muslim world. But at the end of the day, with these terrorists, with people who do something like the act committed today on Westminster Bridge, it's really not about us. It's really not about the West. It's not about our freedoms. It's not about ideology. It's about them. It's about their psychology, their needs, their needs to believe that there, there's a Satan out there somewhere who destroy their lives. And so at the end of the day, Although religion is certainly a factor in Islamist terrorism, I'd never, I'm not suggesting it's not, we're dealing with a terrorist brilliant exploitation of troubled young men, and they know how to identify them. And unless we are able to accept the fact that in surveillance means and investigations, there will be some injustice to individuals for the protection of the greater mass of the citizenry, you're not going to get any farther than we are today.